But we're broadcasting live, not from the place we want to be, which would be the studio. We're broadcasting live the last month from my apartment. So, you know, things can get a little testy here from time to time. We're in small parameters. But uh, glad you could join us. Glad you could be with us. And, you know, the last time we had a pandemic that, at least in my opinion, was this serious, was obviously the HIV-AIDS pandemic, which happened in the 80s. And there are some people out there that are making a comparison and saying that, you know, that pandemic didn't get the attention from the medical community that it really needed. There are people that have that opinion. The man that does have that opinion, certainly he's joining us on the line right now. He is HIV positive. His name is Tracy Skinner from the Sin City Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, and he has made those comparisons, and we wanted to hear from him. Tracy, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing well. And yourself? Doing good, Tracy. I appreciate you taking the time um, during this during the difficult time that we're all in here. So you've you've been quoted as saying that you believe that there are some similarities between what is taking place today with the coronavirus and HIV in response to the government. Can you elaborate on this and tell us why you feel that way? Well, um, about getting all the proper information out to everybody. You know, if we get the correct information, then we all know how to take care of ourselves. And with people in power holding back information and letting people um, do things on their own and not listening, um, it will help spread things. Do you think that in the 80s, there were people out there that were ob obviously not practicing safe sex, and maybe they didn't take HIV as serious as they should have taken it, and maybe they didn't know. And do you feel uh, today there are a number of people like the ones, for example, that are protesting that are not practicing social distancing? Do you see a comparison there? Well, no, not really. I mean, because back then we didn't know what the disease was. I mean, it was hitting folks, and we had no clue. And then back then we had a president that wouldn't even say the word AIDS, you know. So um, spreading it, we didn't know what was going on. And now with this virus, we know how, to, how it spreads. And then we have people out there that are protesting that are – not just doing the social distancing, not wearing the mask, and protesting this when our governors in the state that we live in are telling people to stay in, wear masks, you know, do social distancing. Um, back then, we didn't know those things, and we do right. now. So, right. No, um, that's a good point. I'm I listening. yeah, that's a good point. I agree with you. So, in a sense, you know, listen, I, I don't have any serious viruses, but I hold a lot of anger. And you make a good point, by the way, uh, Tracy, Thank to you. those people Thank that are you. that are not practicing social distance. But you're right. They know they have to know. And if they don't know, they're either ignorant, they're not paying attention to the news, or maybe they're just selfish and they just don't care. You're right, because in the 80s, a lot of people didn't know how serious HIV AIDS was. The information wasn't out there. But you're so right. You make such a good point. Because there's enough information out there. We know how serious this virus is. We know how you can get it. I mean, heck, you can get it just by going to the supermarket and maybe somebody coughs on you or maybe you're touching something that somebody else touched that's asymptomatic. Um, exactly. For somebody, yeah, for somebody like yourself, I would imagine you must hold some anger towards those type of people because in a way you didn't have a chance, and they do, right? Yeah, I, yeah, my emotions have been in so many different directions, you know. Um, I am a long-term survivor. I've been living with AIDS for 29 years. And, um, and yeah, I'm scared for my life. I'm scared for my friends' lives. When I see people out there, they don't know who they're going to come in contact with. And there's plenty of people that have compromised immune systems that they may come in contact with that they have no idea about. And... Um, yeah, I live in a little bit of fear right now. I have not left my house um, in over 45 days. Um, wow! Wow! And, yeah, and so how do you get food? I, I mean, how do you how do you go to the, you know how do you get food at this? Are you just ordering in every day? Like what? what? It, it, Instacart. You know. Yeah, like what? Use Instacart. Luckily, I have um, I have a partner that lives in my house with me that goes out and does the shopping. Um, but then I'm scared when he goes out because then sure, yeah. he's in contact and then he comes back, you know. But, yeah, so, I mean, there's so many triggers that I have right now. and But we're, sure. we're playing safe, and I have friends. I have amazing friends um, that drop off food at my door um, and all that kind of stuff. So, again, sure. within our community and within my friends, 
we take care of each other and and that's what we're doing right now is joining sure. together, listening to the rules out there and protecting each other. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Tracy Skinner with the Sin City Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Tracy, nice enough to come on our show and share his story. He has the HIV virus. His immune system is obviously compromised. He hasn't left his place in 45 days. Now, I'll only speak for myself, Tracy. You know, I'm very scared. I don't have a compromised immune system. I'm 30. I'm 40 years old. God, I almost said I'm 39. Sadly, I turned 40 a few days ago. Uh, but Tracy, you know, I'm scared every time I go to the supermarket, and that's really the only time I ever go out. I'm scared. I try to practice social distance. I'm touching things. I wash my hands immediately when I get home. Now, I can't even imagine how you feel, somebody with a compromised immune system, because I hate to say it like this, but I'm sure you would probably agree with me. If you contract this virus, there is a good chance you might not make it. And I hate to say that, but, you know, I can't imagine what you're going through, what your partner's going through, because I'm sure your partner knows if he or she drops off stuff for you and, and somehow you get the virus from that person, I mean, it's a lot of responsibility and you'd feel a lot of guilt. So, I mean, can you just take us through the emotions that you go through and the fear that you have gone through on a daily basis. I can't even imagine what you're going through. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, um, uh, my mom lives in Montana, um, and my mother is my best friend and I talk to her every morning. My mom is 78 years old. Um, I turned 56 today. Um, and well, happy so, birthday. Yeah. Every, every day I think about it and it scares me for, not being able to say goodbye to her if something happens to me, if I do get sick, because, yeah, I won't be the one that they put on a respirator. Um, they think that I've already lived my life and um, I already have a compromised immune system, so um, I wouldn't be one that they would save. Um, and so, yeah, I fear that every day. Um, I Thank goodness I have a, a great circle of friends, um, I talk about my anxieties. Um, sometimes I hold them in, and sometimes, you know, people don't really understand because they may not be in the same predicament that I have been in. Um, I've been hospitalized since 1999, 27 different times for different things with this virus that I, with, with HIV. You know, so, yeah, this thing could really knock me out if I come in contact with any of it. So, uh, and Tracy, has 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 your HIV uh, evolved into autoimmune deficiency syndrome, or is it? How, where, where does that where does that stand right now with you? Um, yeah, when I was diagnosed in 1991, I was diagnosed with 117 T cells, and so with that, um, I was diagnosed with AIDS right t right then in 1991. So I've been living with AIDS for 29 years. Wow. Do you, do you have any friends, or do you know anybody who is in the same situation that you are that has been adversely affected by this virus? Oh, yeah. I mean, my circle of friends are mostly positive. Um, and, um, and yeah, I have a lot of long-term survivor friends, and then I have ones that are newly diagnosed, and then, yeah, a wide range of friends that are negative, positive, and all of that. And have any of them been affected by, the, by COVID-19 or the coronavirus? Um, actually, you know, I heard of a friend of mine, um, just on Friday night, that passed away in L.A. So, oh, gosh, um, I'm so sorry. That's awful. I'm so sorry yeah. to hear that. I have to ask you this. You know, I criticize people every day for undermining this virus, Tracy. I really do. And uh, what would you say to people like, example, Bill O'Reilly, who said those people that are dying were on their last leg anyway? What would you say to the protesters that say, let's open today? What would you say to all those people out there that have been undermining this virus since day one. Rush Limbaugh, who said, who compared this to a cold. Other right-wing talk show hosts who have been downplaying this virus, undermining this virus, and making excuses for the president of the United States, and not to make this political, but for somebody like you, in the condition that you're in and how scared you are, and I feel for you, I really do, what would you say to the Bill O'Reilly's and the Rush Limbaugh's out there that uh, compa have compared this to the common cold, continue to undermine this virus, and want people out there protesting and care, it seems to me anyway, care more about the economy than innocent lives like yourself? 
Um, well, what I would say to him, you wouldn't really be able to air on the air. <laughs> right. So right. <laughs> I will be polite and not say that. Um, but I'm just, you know, it's, they're stupid. You know, yeah, I, I am worried about the economy. Yeah, people have to work. We have to, you know, have money coming in through the United States and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if we're not around, we can't bring the money back into it. And this virus is very serious. And these people are stupid. Listen to the doctors. The doctors know what they're, you know, talking about. They know. They have fought, like you said, with this, with HIV. They know how to fight certain viruses, certain diseases, and all that. They have the knowledge, so listen to them. Stay in. Protect you, your loved ones, your friends, everybody. Protect our community. Yeah, that's well said. I agree with you, Tracy, and I get frustrated every day. Um, I get frustrated every day because good people like yourselves, uh, you know, I think of myself, and I'm very fortunate that I'm able still to have a job. Uh, I have some medical conditions, but certainly not as serious as yours, and my immune system is, is decent anyway. Uh, but I'm still scared. I'm still scared for myself. I'm, my parents, my parents are in their, uh, my father's in his early 70s. I'm worried about my family. And I yeah. think the worst thing, I, uh, Tracy, I think the worst thing we can do as a society, I really mean this, is to open everything up too early. Now, if they do open things up and, you know, the, the people aren't getting uh, infected and it, the numbers continue to go down, then, then fine. But I am worried, Tracy, that we are going to reopen things way too early. And if and when that happens, and I think it will, it might not start here in Las Vegas, but it could start in other states. I'm really worried that this thing can spread because there's so many unanswered questions. You know a lot about HIV. You've had it for almost 30 years, so you, you've seen a gazillion doctors. You know a little bit about infectious disease. I just yeah. think if we make the mistake of you know closing things too long, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Financial ruin. The economy is going to struggle. Eventually, the economy is going to get back on track. Once somebody dies you know that's it they're gone they're six feet underneath the ground so that's where yeah. i'm coming from i just think it's better safe than sorry yeah you're absolutely right you know back in the 80s we lost a whole decade of gay men you know that are no longer around and that they're gone and and here in las vegas you know we're a very touristy city and we have a mayor that wants to open up this you know it's crazy you know we yeah we need to protect Las Vegas, and if other places open up, then, like you said, we're a tourist city. They're going to come in here. It's going to spread, and the yeah, I just think yeah. that we should keep it closed, let this level out, you know, yeah. test, test, get all the tests. That, you know, it's just like right now with HIV. U equals U. You want to know your status. If you know your status, then you're not going to be able to spread this virus around. You exactly. Know? So, yeah. If yeah. you're able to get tests, and again, you know, coming to tests, you know, back then, I mean, with HIV, people could go and get tests. Yeah. Here, it's going to be more of, you know, a mar marginalized communities. It's going to be the wealthy communities that get the tests first, and that's kind of sad. It know? is very and, sad. It is. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're No, you're right. It is. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, you know, we, we may even lose certain parts of our communities, you know. Um, sure, and, sure. So it's just all around, it's just scary. And I just wish that people would really understand and listen and sit back and look at the big, giant picture and look at who you affect. It's just not one person. It can be, you know, 10, 12 different people that is a, exactly. a, a chain reaction to all this. That's it's what I said crazy. earlier in the show. That's what I said earlier in the show. You got these people protesting, and then their response is, well, you know, I'm going to take my own personal responsibility, and if I get infected, it's on me. But they're too dumb to understand that if they get infected, they could affect 10, 20, 30, hundreds of other people if they get infected. Yeah. It's selfish. Yeah, no, there's no question. Tracy, let me say uh, please stay safe. We appreciate you, you coming on our show and, 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 and sharing your personal story. I'm sorry you've had to go through what you've had gone through for almost three decades, but uh, you know you're the type of people that I am thinking about, and we want you to get through this okay. I want yeah, I want everyone to get through it okay, especially people like you, you that are at higher that are at higher risk. So, uh, Tracy, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate your time, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome, and thank you. Sure, you. Yeah. Bet.